Now, I am very pleased to uh, welcome in studio this evening a, a woman who is actually at today's uh, House Oversight Committee hearing, Ms. Katie Pavlis from uh, townhall.com. How are you doing, Katie? Good. How are you? Excellent. Good. All right. So, uh, so what was your take on today's hearing? Um, well, I think we found out even more that there's a cover-up going on. You had William Newell, from, who's a former uh, ATS special agent in charge, uh, with emails back and forth with the White House, yet he tried to claim that uh, walking guns into Mexico was never uh, the plan or the goal of, of this operation. Um, what I thought was interesting is he never mentioned Operation Fast and Furious. In his testimony, in his statements, he always talked about Project Gunrunner, the efforts there, which right. makes me think, going back to looking at the budget, they were covering up Operation Fast and Furious under the name of Project Gunrunner, although they're two completely separate programs. Yeah, because Project Gunrunner is, I mean, this is sort of the umbrella name for a lot of different operations, right. for basically every operation right. on the border. Uh, now, you know, it's interesting that that's where your mind takes you. My mind, maybe I'm a little bit more conspiratorially minded than you, <laughs> because my mind says, all right, if he's not talking about Fast and Furious, he's talking about Project Gunrunner, how many other operations perhaps had uh, right. similar things? You know, one of the things we learned, we learned this email that was sent from uh, uh, Newell to Kevin mm -hmm. O'Reilly at the National Security Council. At the White House. At the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, you didn't get these from me. He said, the first attachment is what we were going to hand out to the media prior to our planned August 26, uh, 2010 press conference. We will still use this if we ever do a press conference. It's been vetted through ATF headquarters. The second word, Doc, is what we were going to give to Melson uh, as notes in case he got asked specific questions about our industry operation efforts during GRIT. Now, I, I did a little bit of research about what GRIT mm -hmm. was. And GRIT was a two-month-long operation in Houston, Texas. Where uh, Carter's Country Gun Stores where is located. Exactly, yes. mm -hmm. where Carter's Country uh, Gun Store is located, where uh, uh, the attorney for Carter's Country says Bill Carter had same thing yep. happening. You know, a, a suspicious characters would walk in wanting to buy guns. He'd contact ATF, and ATF would say, oh, yeah, let him go. Yep. And then they'd show up in Mexico. And then but, they would blame them for it. They they were accusing the gun stores of, of being the source for cartel um, weapons when absolutely. really they were doing what ATF was telling them to do. Now, the the press releases and everything for GRIT talk about the number of firearms that uh, were interdicted mm -hmm. and the number of indictments that were issued. But you can find similar statements about Fast and Furious. Look, right. people have been indicted in Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. The question is, was it worth letting thousands of guns go to Mexico in order to get these 20 indictments when, when you have ATF agents today who are saying you didn't need to do this to right. get these indictments. Well, what I thought was pretty alarming today is Mr. Newell, who was um, very heavily involved in the oversight of this, would not admit that this was a bad idea. And yeah. he would not say that he would never do this again. And he said that there was a risk assessment involved. And Daryl Issa said, what about people? What about the people in Mexico? What about the people in America? You know, there's, there's lives at stake. And the fact that he wouldn't say this was a bad idea and that he was defending the program was very alarming to me. And he also kind of got caught up in his own, um, you know, presenting two stories on the issue. He, mm -hmm. he admitted that he knew about this in January 2009, yeah. yet the program didn't stop until January 2010. Yet throughout the hearing, he was saying that walking guns into Mexico wasn't the goal. Now, we just talked about how he was calling this project Gunrunner. If what does Gunrunner mean? It means you're running guns. I yeah. mean, if where are those guns now, let me, going? Let me let me stop and correct the dates just for a second here, because November of 2009. Right. Not January of 2009. November of 2009 right, right, right. is when they, because yeah. this is, that's the other thing. They've tried to float it out here that, oh, right. no, this was actually a Bush administration right, project. Exactly. No, 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 no. Right. Uh, November of 2009, they become aware that these guns are showing up in Mexico. Right. January of 2010, there's this memo where they talk about, we're going to let this continue. Uh, and and uh, and they did. Mm -hmm. They let it continue all the way uh, up to the murder of Brian Terry. Right. Which is when they, um, you know, this email that you just read, they submitted, um, Newell sent this email saying, I don't want people to have the perception that we are running guns into Mexico. <laughs> Yet today he continued to claim that that wasn't the goal of the agency. And, and the ATF agents who were in testimony today um, refuted that. And we saw in the second Fast and Furious hearing that they said that wasn't true, that the, the initial goal from the beginning was to put guns in the hands of cartels. And so... Um, another th thing that came out of the hearing today that we've all known is that ATF agents in Mexico were left completely in the dark on this issue. Mm -hmm. So they kept finding these guns and they noticed they were being traced back to ATF and saying, 
hey guys, what's going on with your Phoenix office? Because we keep finding, you know, guns at, at violent crime scenes down here, and you haven't, you know, told us what's going on. And they were being told by officials in the Phoenix office and in Washington, D.C., that it's under investigation. We're still looking into it. Yet they were told they were going to stop the program in July 2010. It continued. Um, so it was just a major, major problem. Agents in Mexico who were dealing more directly with the cartels, quite frankly, right. um, were left completely in the dark on the issue. Yeah, and that's the thing. The, if, we, if we are supposed to believe mm -hmm. Bill Newell, and if we're supposed to believe the Obama administration's line on this, right. um, once the guns went to Mexico, we would then somehow use that knowledge to go after the drug kingpins. Right. That, we've heard that word a lot, kingpins. Right. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you don't tell law enforcement in Mexico about the operation, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if your own ATF officials in Mexico don't know about the operation, then how... How? How well, do you go right. after the kingpins? And that was a pretty funny part of testimony where um, Mr. Newell actually got laughed at, laughed at um, by many members of the committee because he said, well, we, this was a goal of ours to go into Mexico and find the kingpins. And someone asked, well, how are you going to do that if you weren't going to send people in there to extradite them to the United States for prosecution? Because he said the goal wasn't to bring them back to the United States. And then he said that they w wanted the Mexican government to prosecute them. And then the other question came up of, how are you going to do that when you never told the Mexican government or Mexican officials or even ATF officials working in Mexico that this was going on? I mean, why do you think that you could prosecute them there? But going back to, you know, we always ask the question of how high up did this go? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm focused on Mr. Newell because he gave the most non-answer answers, I think, out of mm -hmm. anyone today. Because he, he didn't answer any que questions directly, but I think that gave us more information. But he did have an admission of... Um, you know, DEA was involved, and now we know that the IRS was involved. Um, what can go wrong, right, when the IRS is involved with something? <laughs> what but, government agency wasn't right, involved exactly. at this point? Exactly. So it's really hard for me. He was trying to sell the idea that this was a Phoenix based operation um, handed out by low level ATF operatives in that office, nothing higher. And unfortunately, Democrats on the committee are also saying that. They're saying it was born and raised in one office. Um, however, after Newell was trying to sell this line of it was low-level agents gone awry, he admitted that there were five major government agencies involved, including, you know, we found out that he was emailing um, National Security Advisor at the White House. Yeah. I mean, you cannot sell both of those, especially in the same, the same <sighs> hearing, and expect people to believe you. Look, this was, this was so widespread, apparently the EEOC was involved, making sure that these straw purchasers all fit right. into the correct demographic brackets. You know, right. we didn't want to get in trouble. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, but, but, you know, seriously, you, you're, you're right. The, that is the, the, uh, the story and the narrative that's being advanced, mm -hmm. but it doesn't match up. I mean, we heard that Lanny Brewer, who's the assistant attorney general, the head of the criminal division at the Department of Justice, right. uh, was aware of this, that there were meetings uh, in, in which Fast and Furious was discussed, in which the head of the ATF office in L.A., mm -hmm. the head of the ATF office in Houston, Texas, were uh, were in on the discussions. Right. I'd like to know, by the way, why the head of the ATF in L.A. and Houston were involved in a right. discussion about an operation that was supposedly low-level, right. entirely based out of the Phoenix mm -hmm. office. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And we also saw, you know, um, Democrats blaming this on Congress for not having oh, strict yeah. enough gun reporting laws and that they didn't think it was fair for ATF to be um, disciplined or in a you know, representative Cummings said he didn't want the morale of the agency to be down. Um, but, you know, it was one, you know, one, one other interesting thing is a lot of the ATF, um, especially Carlos Canino was there and he was saying that this isn't in the ATF playbook. Mm -hmm. You do not let guns walk. That's the first thing they drill into your head when you go into training. So it was inconceivable to him that this was going to happen. However, you have, um, and, and people would lose their jobs if you even lost track of a weapon. One, right. a if, single if, one, if, and if no one has lost your... their job. No one has lost, there's 2,000 guns missing. And if you lose your own sidearm, right. you're done. Uh, it, it's a three day suspicion, yeah. I think he said. Right, you're done. You know, you have, you have disciplinary, ac disciplinary action taken against you, yet you have 40,000 people in Mexico dead, two federal agents in, um, from America dead, and no one has lost their job over this. And it was interesting, too, to hear today the, the DOJ armed these cartels to the point that they were arming the equivalent of a Marine regiment. I mean, they, it's, this was not a small thing that they did. Yeah. They were pretty much arming people to go to war. 
And what's scary is, as a congressman, I used to talk about this um, at the end of the hearing, he said, we have a narco state on the brink down in Mexico, which we do. I don't think people really realize yeah. how extreme it is there. And he mentioned, you know, they they have enough money to pay off officials in, in Mexico. They have enough money to pay off officials in the United States. They basically run everything, and the U.S. government's giving them the tools they need to do it. Hope and change. Yeah, hope and change. So. <laughs> Wow. Well, listen, Katie, I'm glad you could uh, join us this evening. Uh, I really appreciate your coverage. Uh, keep up the great work. No problem. It's an important issue, so we'll be on it. All right. Katie Pavlich uh, from townhall.com with us here in studio.